During the Revolutionary War, any American ship owner could send a boat to attack British vessels. Whatever they captured, they could split with the government. But they weren't pirates. They were privateers. The Patriots knew they would never be able to match the might of the Royal Navy. But there were other British ships they could attack, like merchantmen and supply ships. The British war effort depended on them, and they weren't always well defended. That's why, in April 1776, the Continental Congress set up the rules for privateers. Privateers were like an unofficial navy, free of charge. It was the ship owners, not the government, who bought weapons and gunpowder and paid the crews. Their boats ranged from small whaleboats crewed by a few men to the 600-ton Caesar armed with 26 cannon. When privateers put out to sea, any British ship was fair game, and some merchantmen were hauling truly valuable cargo. For the owners and the crew, the sea became an open-air casino. Capture the right ships, and you'd get rich. The American privateer, Rattlesnake, brought in over $2 million in British goods over the war, but you could just as easily lose it all. On a later mission, the rattlesnake was captured and sailed under a British flag for the rest of the war. Because prizes were shared out proportionately, even the most junior sailors could hit the jackpot. Capturing a ship laden with rum and sugar could mean that all men, even the cabin boy, got hundreds of dollars. By contrast, if you were a soldier in the Continental Army, you probably made less than $10 a month. This created difficulties for the Continental Navy. Not many experienced seamen wanted to serve on their ships when they had the chance of getting rich as privateers. The privateers were doing dirty work that the Continental Navy couldn't, or wouldn't. Depriving the British of millions of dollars worth of goods, forcing the Royal Navy to spread itself thin, and helping to win the Revolutionary War on the water. 